There are over a thousand flea markets in the U.S., with two million vendors conducting $30 billion in sales every year. Like me, this is where many people start their entrepreneurial journey. This is Artem, totally. one of the dozen vendors here at the Silver Lake Flea Market. Uh, totally. My name is Artem. Uh, I run World Vintage. I've been doing vintage since 2018. It's okay. I started collecting, I'm a DJ, so I travel for tours. So if I'm in a different country, I need to buy a couple things. I just started picking up pieces, and then I just had too many. So I had to, had to come let them go out here. And that's, that's what brought me here, it's just the overflow. Just my girl being like, too much stuff. I just got done doing thrift cons, so I had to narrow it down from 17 racks to nine. So everything's a little bit of a mess, but. My family and I immigrated to America in the 90s. I remember it like it was yesterday. Moving to Detroit in the 90s was a culture shock. Back in Latvia, my mom had just gotten her engineering degree, but when we got to the States, her degree meant nothing. It wasn't transferable, and she was forced to find work in housekeeping, cleaning hotels, and cleaning rich people's houses for cash. We weren't exactly legal immigrants, so we moved around a lot. I went to a total of nine different schools before the age of 14. Always a new foreign kid. The driving skills, I feel like they're better. I just got it. Um, I feel like it's different, but... We were dirt poor. We lived in a one room apartment just outside of Detroit. And this is where my mom discovered Salvation Army. But my mom made it fun, and I eventually learned that I could find new things in the thrift, which made it an adventure. It's okay. It happens. It happens. It's okay, buddy. It's cold as f dude. Look at that fool just staring at us. No, that's a cutout. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You know, I mean, she's two and a half. No, she, never was, okay. she was never barking. <laughs> oh, stop it. I don't like it. Stop it. Do you think I like that? I don't like it. First time I did Silver Lake was like March. It's going a lot, bro. I remember when it used to be the other lot. I think a lot of people started pulling up. You know, more like not even just for t-shirts, like more like style, like pants, like hoodies. I'm looking for pieces. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see it grow because you know this is what we want. Like as vendors, like we want like, a popular feel like this. Yeah. And it, like you would just sign up and like a week ahead. Now you have to sign up months ahead. Yeah. Oh and shit, really? Like, yeah. Damn. That's fire. So I started probably selling here, I would say about five years ago, when it was at uh, Mitchell Terrain Street. I like how consistent it is, so it's every Saturday, you know, every Saturday and Sunday. They just change this to that. Um, but this is probably like my favorite flea market. It's super consistent. Um, I do really well here, and uh, yeah. I'm cold right now. 
I like, I had a jacket. Um, I left it at home on accident. I was like so nervous about this interview. I was just like uh, trying to freaking. Hey, but look, it turned it out. It turned out to be easier than you thought. Right? Totally, totally. Like I'm not. I don't. I never do this, but it was nice to kind of talk about like shit yeah. that I've done. That's one thing. Is like. There's no way to make you unnervous. You're gonna be nervous. Yeah. But just know it's not gonna be as bad as you thought. I like personally just like anything old, faded. It doesn't necessarily even have to be vintage these days. I just like anything that's a cool piece. I feel like it's a good mix of just old and new, you know? And then my booth is pretty unisex. Like w girls come in and buy men's stuff, and boys come in and buy women's stuff. I feel like it's just pretty open. These are always good. These like these are undershirts. These are men men's undershirts from the really? 70s, yeah. Europe. So girls buy these and wear them as dresses, you know, things like that. I would buy it, but I didn't have the knowledge. I just liked it, you know. I was like, look at this whole. When you first started selling, I feel like you were going after it as well. Yeah, just because you were like me, just yeah, just because that's what it was selling. You know what I mean? But I would just keep the older stuff. I became obsessed with like knowing, like dating pieces. You know what I mean? And why is it from this era? The materials, you know, the hardware on them. I got a bunch of books. I bought books. Like I just like went crazy. I just like to know what I have. You know. Tell me about how your booth is set up. Like, is there a particular feng shui that you have? Or? I have OCD, so it's like, just... I know this is color coordinated. Yeah, yeah, it's just like color palettes that I'm into at the moment. I like putting things with things that just like feel right together. It's like a feeling for me. See, there's pants in between jackets. It kind of just flows in my brain. It just works, but I don't know. If, I don't know how it looks to other people. I just hope it looks good, but. It's very attractive for sure when you walk by, the way you set it up, it's great. Cool. Very inviting. I appreciate that. Yeah, very warm. <laughs> yeah, I just like, I like old signs. And I like, I don't know, I feel like I'm in my booth. Like old little helmets, Vietnam. I don't know, it's like, in, it's like a vibe in my head. Just makes me feel like more calm when everything is a bit more organized this way. Setting up, I love setting up my store. I like to take my time and just like do it slow. I hate being rushed in the morning. So I come super early, like 6, 5.30, even though the flea opens at 9. Did you see Malcolm over here? I did. 1960s, like char charcoal. So cool. This thing I bought from a buddy. Yeah. My favorite part about selling is watching people like find a piece that they love and just walking away with it and then coming back next week and being like, dude, I've been getting so many compliments on that piece. That's my favorite part. It's like finding something that I know someone will keep for a long time, not just to resell or, I don't know, to wear and throw away. They'll keep it forever and they'll give it to one of their friends or their kids, whatever, you know, something, a forever piece. How much is this? 40. 40, uh -huh. okay. Right. We're right there. 30. My mom, the one who suggested that I sell my thrift finds. She's the one that suggested Yeah, oh, and I was shit. like, nobody's gonna want this stuff, you know? Oh my God. But anyway, I remember the first sale that I made, she had a little boutique store in Burbank. And she's like, just have a rack of your stuff in the store. It was like women's clothing, but she's like, but just have a rack of yours and we'll see what happens. Maybe when a boyfriend comes in or a husband, whatever. Right, right, right. And sure enough, I remember uh, the next day I came back after leaving my rack in there. And she said that a jacket had sold and that the guy was so excited. And even though I wasn't even there to see it sell, yeah. I was hooked after that. Right. You're like, I gotta go get more. Yeah. Right, instantly. I, that, that memory is so vivid to That's me for cool. that reason. How they fit? Would you do these for sexy, brother? Yeah, yeah. Right. They fit good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, is this your main source of income or? No. What do you do? What's I'm a DJ a music producer. I like doing this. I, I, DJing, DJing's definitely enough. Um, DJing's more of like fun. You know what I mean? This is like a different type of passion. Right now it's kind of it's kind of crazy because most of my focus is like on my son because he's eight months so he's like changing so fast. So, but honestly, I wasn't DJing for a while until he was born. I took like a break. The second he was born, I was just like nonstop making music and DJing every weekend. I'm playing and then I'm coming here. I play until three in the morning, then I show up here at five in the morning. Two hours of sleep. That's just the way it is right now. Yeah, and then I come home, take pictures, hang out with my kid, make some music, make food, all the, all the family stuff. I'm a family man now, it's weird. Never thought I would be. 
And when I'm packing up, I'm just like, oh my God, I get to go home and play with him. So it's like, yeah, you remember, you're like, oh my goodness, there's a little tiny me at home. <laughs> Back in Latvia, we still had the square cars from the Oh, 80s. so you're, you're from Latvia? Yeah. So when we moved here, like everything was round and looked like space to me. You know, as a five-year-old, I was just like, what is going on? So back in Latvia, my mom was an engineer and she taught kids to sew in high school. She was like a, a home economics teacher. We were pretty, pretty poor. So we lived like right outside of Detroit in like a one room apartment. And that's where we discovered Salvation Army. So from there on out, my mom, that's all she dressed me in. I hated it as a kid because I was already like the new foreign kid. I didn't speak English. Now I have to wear like people's old clothes. That was such a bummer. But I realized that you can find new stuff in the thrift store and it made it more fun. And like, I feel like I have been shopping ever since. Shout out moms, man. Seriously. I, I'm kind of the same story. Like my mom, a uh, single mother, and she would shop at the thrifts, but she wouldn't shop for our stuff. Like she really worked really hard like for our stuff, but it was her stuff that she would get at the thrift. Right. And I guess because of that, I always just had fun at the thrift. Like I would just go and play with my brother while with she the toys was shopping. And stuff yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah. And then uh, once I got older, I just started thrifting for myself because I, I just remember her like chopping it up with her friends and being like, look how, look at this outfit, I got it for a dollar, I got exactly. it for 50 cents. And I was like, where'd you get that? You're like, yeah. it's a thrift store and it's like unbelievable at that point. Yeah, so shout out moms, man, yeah, for sure. I lived in New York since I was 17. I moved there by myself um, without my family and I'd just been hustling, hustling, just like being so broke my whole life and then just like something changed and clicked. I started doing crazy stuff for this modeling job, like a Dior job. They like asked me to move there like the day I went and I was supposed to be going to school. I had a scholarship to Michigan State. My mom was like, no, you're gonna stay. We never got this chance, just stay. Like, we'll get your money back from school, just go. I was like, what? And that's what like inspired me to do everything. Like my mom was so supportive of me. I mean, they're young. They had me when they were 19. So it's just like a different relationship we have. So I just watched them hustle my whole life and that just kind of rubbed off on me. Start being flown to Paris to do Balenciaga after party shows like every year. Stuff like that just like changed my life. I was modeling and I had like four jobs. I was traveling a lot doing Fashion Week, like walking in shows. And then um, it just kind of got old. I don't like being in front of the camera. So I started DJing and just like that took off pretty fast. Um, I was lucky enough to like just be around good people and like some crazy people came to see me play. Like Alexander Wang, the designer, came to see me play. And he just took me around the world. He, I was doing like all his parties with like Nicki Minaj, MIA. Then MIA took me on tour after that. It was crazy. And then I moved out here from New York to pursue production. And then I started selling clothes just during the pandemic and it's been, it's been a blast, honestly. Looking forward to like music stuff right now. I'm gonna put out some vinyl, get some vinyl pressed. So I'm really looking forward to like touring again, playing in different countries, sweaty raves, you know. But I don't drink so now, so it's gonna be fun to go back across the seas and just be like, watch everyone be drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm really enjoying the moment right now. It's, I feel like, I feel good right now. Yeah, especially with my son, I feel like he just like changed my life. Everything got better, you know? There's like a purpose. Like, I sell for him. Like, I don't really spend as much money anymore. Like, I used to be buying pieces for myself all the time, you know? But now it's all saved for him. It's just like, I just love it.